So I have this circle here graphed. And let's, uh, what we're going to get at is how to write some equations uh, for a circle. And I think that you've seen probably this before, but I want to get at a couple of ideas with a circle. So here's my center of my circle here at 0, 0. And then I basically just have these X, Y coordinates that, that make it. So this one that I picked, notice that it's over three, up four. So like this is the point three, four. And I know how long my, my radius is because if I just go flat out this way, it's five. So my radius is five long. Uh, so notice it goes over three, up four with a radius of five, uh, which hopefully makes sense because I have a right triangle here. And I know that three squared plus four squared uh, equals five squared, right? It's Pythagorean theorem. So what's nice about this circle is if I know if my, my radius is five, every point that's on here meets that x squared, uh, that's x, plus y squared equals five squared. Because I, what I have is any point on here, I can make some sort of right triangle where I have x distance, y distance, and then I have that, um, that radius of five. So an equation for this circle, all of these points are parts of right triangles that all have a radius of five. So my equation for this could be x squared plus y squared equals five squared, which is 25. So let me take a peek back at Desmos. Yeah, and there's my, there's my equation right there, x squared plus y squared equals 25. So you could say, you know, if I wanted to have a radius of three, this would be a three squared, which would be a nine. And then notice that that's, that's three. So circles are really just a bunch of, um, a bunch of right triangles. It's just basically like every possible right triangle you could make that has that fixed radius. There's one, every single point here is a case of a right triangle that has a radius of three in this case. Cool. So that's one way I could think about this. Um, now that's with my center at zero, zero. So watch what I can do. This is gloriously wonderful. If I go X, uh, plus two, <laughs> notice what that does is that shifts my whole circle to the left too. This matches what we already know about graphing. Make a prediction about if I turn this Y into a Y plus, uh, no, minus three moves it up three. So basically I have my center of my circle. I can read it here. And then my radius is the square root of that. Let me then um, So if I had something like x minus five squared plus y minus seven, uh, plus seven squared <laughs> to the seventh squared equals 36. You know a couple things about that circle. You know its center is at what makes this a zero? Five. What makes this a zero? Negative seven, right? Shifted right five, down seven, with a radius of six of the square root of that. So that means that if I were to graph it, I have this point at five, negative seven, wherever, wherever that's at, just depending on how I've uh, set up my grid. And then it's off six in, in every direction from there. So like this point that's right here, notice that shifted to the right six. So five plus six, that's a shift in, in X, right? So I add six to the X value, but it has the same height, the negative seven. And this one back here shifted back six. So back six from five would be negative one, but it's the same height, negative seven. And then it shifted six in, not shifted, but it's just like that far away from the center, in both of these, so negative seven, if I go up six, it still has a width of five, but it would be at negative one height wise. And then this point still at this X value of five down six from seven would be negative 13. And then I have my circle. Uh, boy, that is probably the worst circle I've ever drawn. And there we go. There's the third worst circle I've ever drawn. So um, this circle, I can tell where these kind of extreme points coming off of the center is. 
and it's centered at five negative seven, right? With a distance of six in every direction from that from that center. Great. So one other thing I want to I want to think about is, you know how I have this equal to nine? I could I could write this a, another way. I could I could divide everything by the nine. So it could be x plus two squared, <laughs> but divided by nine plus uh, y minus 3 squared and that's also divided by 9 and if I divide 9 by 9 that's equal to 1 and notice it, it's just a different way of writing the same the same circle and one other thing I, I could I could do it this way I could actually like put this whole thing in the squaring so I could say uh, x plus 2 divided by 3 squared got an extra plus y minus 3 ah my goodness divided by 3 squared equals 1 and so notice like these are all the same all the same circle right and they're all different forms. In this case, it's just equal to r squared. Here I divided by it, so it's like x squared over it. But then I could say, oh, if I just wanted to square the whole thing, see how you square the 3, you get the 9. Three different ways to talk about circles.